It's me, Margaret, and I'm here outside on a pretty day, a little warmer than I'd like, but a lot better than it's been. And I have finished objects to show. The problem is, is that three of the four of them are in the wash. <laughs> I didn't think about it. So um, <clears throat> I do have this to show you right here, but I have pictures. I can show you the pictures. But um, this was the Phoenix hat that is the fundraiser for the Children's Burn Unit, Burn Clinic. And I didn't follow the pattern exactly in two respects. First of all, it's supposed to have more of a pyramid shape of this cabling. And I just cabled all the way around and then finished it off up here. I thought I was gonna finish the decreases just fine, but I didn't realize that I didn't have any double pointed needles in the right size. And I am the pits at Magic Loop. Now I'm not ready to give up on the Magic Loop yet. I just so up until this point, I just haven't mastered it. I keep getting ladders worse than I do with double points. I do double points pretty well. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you this announcement. I have successfully achieved magic loop status. See, no ladders. Usually I have ladders right there on either side where you split the uh, cord. And apparently I've figured it out me. But anyhow, at the time, I did not have the right size double points, so I was trying to do it with the two circular needle method. And I just totally screwed that up. And so before it got any worse, I just gathered the closure so I didn't actually do all the decreases. But it comes out fine and it fits well. And, um, Obviously, this one hasn't made it into the wash yet, as it's still covered with cat hair. But I loved this pattern, and this simple little mock cable is a four-step process, a four-row process, and it was easy and fun, challenging. The, the pro only reason why I did not do the pyramid shape was that you really had to think and count for each row was a little bit different, and um, I just didn't want to do that. Now, on another good note, I finished Luke Knit's pattern that he sent me called the Twistery Hat. Now, I cheated on that one too. <laughs> it's supposed to have two rows of those diagonal stripes, and I put only one row as I just wanted to focus on the brim. He put a helpful video on that showed me uh, how to reach in from the proper direction and that's what I was doing wrong but once I understood whoops once I understood uh, it wasn't difficult at all and it came out adorable so um, hopefully I'm somehow or another inserting a picture here for you to see that and on the same vein I did another hat now this one is a free pattern called crochet for cancers basket weave vertical stripe and it looks like that. And I used a yarn by Impeccable, which is Michael's brand. Wait, I'm gonna go get that. Now, I told you a big fat story. It wasn't Impeccable at all, it's Charisma. But it's Loops and Threads brand. And I've had, I felt the Charisma that chunky version that they have, I think it's called. I've never used it, but I felt it, and it feels like really nice yarn. But this was Charisma Baby yarn. And you know, this feels good for an acrylic. It, and it, it was easy to work with too, but it's so soft. Can you just see how, <laughs> I mean, there is just, I, I don't know how to describe it to you, but I, I wouldn't have to wash this and still consider it super, super soft. So yeah, next time this goes on sale at Michael's, grab you some. That's how I bought it. But here's something that um, I will talk with. Again, I'm gonna put a picture of this hat somewhere up here, but if you can see <clears throat> the way it's colored, it's white and then it'll have like a spot of color here and a spot of color here and a spot of color here, like that. So I was actually picturing it to be, you know, all white with a spot of color sprinkled here and there, but it actually came out more colorful than I was expecting. 
because it was crochet. Remember that each crochet stitch takes more yarn than a knit stitch. And so it's a very juvenile looking hat with a more mature, I think, uh, styling. But, but it's pretty and it's soft and I like it a lot. So, um, and I probably will be doing this pattern again because it's really, really fast. Now this other thing I finished comes by lots of names. Um, I, I don't know, it's like a hooded scarf. But Sarah on our revel Ravelry group, who is Crunchiest One <laughs> is her name, she had done one from a Lion Brand pattern. But when she had posted it, she didn't post the link. So I went on Ravelry to see if I could find it. And I didn't, I found one similar, but not the one she had used. And anyway, I, I, it got me looking at other patterns of this same style. And a hooded cowl is basically what it's called. And I thought to myself, you know, I could make that. And I found one from Repeat Crafter Me, who's one of my favorite crochet artists. And the difference is though, is she had done, all right, it's, it's a hood and then I just left this attached. You just pull it over and it's ready to go. It's, you don't have to wrap or do anything like that. And hers was a separate long scarf that came over with buttons right here. And while I like that very much, and she explains that she really made hers too big, um, it did appear to be that way to me because it would just kind of hang there and you couldn't, if it's buttoned, then you can't really wrap it around or you lose the cuteness of the button. So I contemplated playing with that one for a little while, and then I thought, you know, I think I wouldn't want that at all. I think I would just like to grab something and yank it over my head and do that. So I kind of improvised and made my uh, own version of that pattern, so I don't have anything to share. <laughs> but it, and it came out okay. It's, it, I think I would have liked it if I'd added a, a row or two more. It's just... It kind of stops right here, and, and I would want it a little bit longer so I could make sure I could stuff it in my coat. There you go. One of my favorite threads that we have going on the Ravelry group right now is, is a, is a Q&A. There's four questions uh, to learn a little bit more about us, like how we got started doing knitting and crochet and that sort of thing. And one of the questions is, what's your favorite thing you ever made? And mine was a loom knit hat made from Dollar Tree yarn. And here it is. <laughs> I, this is the first thing I ever made. And this yarn is actually great. Do you, can you see the halo effect on it, the fuzzies? It was 100% acrylic. And it was, called, it was made by Karen. C-A-R-O-N, and I cannot remember the name of the yarn, but it's discontinued, and I had a whole bunch of it. It's really soft, and, and I don't know why it's discontinued, but, but it was. So anyhow, I, this hat never, it's a great hat, fits well, and I'll never give it away because it's my very first thing and the thing I love the best. So. May Olson and I apparently have similar tastes in videos for knitting and crocheting. And she's been sharing with me some that she's found recently. And I've been sharing a few with her. And she's really good at what she's been finding, things that are new to us. And one is Knit Nottingham. And it's obviously Nottingham, England. And it is well, apparently there's a shop there called Knit Nottingham. This is the owner, Eleanor, and she is a hoot. Now, each one of her little, uh, I don't know if she calls them podcasts or vlogs or whatever, but each one is shorter, which I love. She has them in playlists, so if you like longer videos, turn the playlist on and let them play one right after the other. I think she's hysterical. May loves her too. But that's her personality and being really effervescent and everything. She's, she's giving you great information and great tips. She's an extremely knowledgeable knitter and crocheter. And she'll give you information on everything from types of yarn. She may talk about a specific yarn that she's recently got in the store and tell you why you would want to use this kind of cotton instead of this kind of cotton. And, you know, just real very, very, very good tips and explanations. So another one that she showed that I actually watched today was about um, yarn weights. And you know, my first thought was, oh yeah, I got that down. No, I learned all kinds of things that she had, had brought up in there. 
So, um, whatever. And then she does it with such great personality. She also has a lot of her customers. She'll come in and have a customer interview, so to speak. And so she's fun to watch. I'm going to put a link in the description box, or you can just touch the little information symbol, the I that pops up. Um, and where you can go to her channel. And you know what I do whenever I pick up a new channel that I'm going to decide whether I'm going to subscribe to or not, is I'll go back to some of the early ones so I can learn who they are. But whenever you do that, please keep in mind that they are their early works, so to speak. And like, I'm so embarrassed of some of my early ones. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I'm embarrassed of some of my late ones for that matter. But anyway, um, to make a long story short, I did the same thing with Eleanor, and I got to know who she was, and that she was a shop owner. She had actually bought in with two other people, and yada, 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 yada. So it, it might be worth it for you to do that. I went to the weekly vlog playlist, I think she called it. So um, I'll, I'll link to that. And then another one was RJ Knits, and I don't know how I missed this one. RJ also gives tips, and he's also a shorter you know, version. And he also has a series that he, he'll pop one in here and there called Will It Knit? And he takes unusual objects like um, uh, a VCR, an old VCR tape, you know, uh, VHS tape, and pull it out and see how it works, how it, how it knits. So <laughs> that's kind of interesting. But he's, he's really clever and very talented. So I'll put a link to his channel in there too. Another one that I like to watch is Julian, and he his channel is called Knitting, but it's spelled funny. It's K-N-T-T-N-G, because he says there's no I in knitting. So uh, <laughs> that's his channel. So I'll link to that. He is a young guy, uh, adult. Uh, I think he's, he just turned 30. He's engaged. And he's got lots of talents, plays the guitar, and does all kinds of stuff, but he's really funny and entertaining too. So uh, you might want to watch him. But, and there's some more that uh, we've tossed around to each other. I haven't watched all the suggestions yet, so I'm not going to give them a shout out just yet. But I, I really want you to go see Knit Nottingham and visit Eleanor. <laughs> I think you'll like her. Ooh, it's Halloween time. And last year I did a whole Halloween episode. <laughs> Thomas helped me out a little bit in the background as I told some local folklore ghost story that's supposed to be happening at a church right over there. But um, yeah, I'll put a link in the description box if you want a good story. And the year before that, I did the Harry Potter sorting hat. It was crochet. Very easy, I thought. And it came out really cute. So I'll put that link in the description box. and. Um, and then, of course, there's Pinterest. I don't know, if, you, if, you, if you're a Pinterest person and you get it, I don't get on it all the time because when I do, I get lost. <laughs> I just love it. It's like one thing leads to another thing leads to another thing. And again, it's any topic that you could ever imagine, similar to YouTube. Um, but you can type in specific things like Halloween knitting or Halloween crochet. And then you get all these wonderful things. The search engine's not perfect, and it has a few odd things thrown in there. Or maybe those people have tagged it that way. I don't, I don't know. But um, for the most part, it's pretty accurate. And I had the best time looking at uh, patterns or ideas or things like that. So you might want to try that. And speaking of time of year, it is fall now in the Northern Hemisphere. That is when the charities are going to put out the call for their collections. Now, on the Ravelry Group, we have decided to do a charity along. Yes, the first official Sheepishly Sharing Charity Along. I've set up a simple form outside of Ravelry where you can enter what you've donated, and I'll explain that in a minute. So technically, you don't have to interact at all to be a part of our donation group. I mean, I didn't participate in Ravelry for a really long time, and it just, sometimes it's just one more thing. You know, there's only so much social media one can do. The Ravelry group is great because you can introduce us to new charities and share patterns and get help. And I know myself well enough to know that I'll probably forget if you share those things with me elsewhere, but since you'll be entering your finished objects on a little form yourself, I can't mess that up. This is the very first one, so as we run into problems or develop ideas, we can improve as we go along. 
So your input is invaluable. I mean, a lot of us don't have a lot of time to put in to a lot of this. And you might think, oh, well, I only have three things I can donate. Well, your three things put with somebody else's four things put with somebody else. You know, it just adds up. And I just thought it would be fun for us to, to, uh, just to see. So here's the page where I explained it on the group, at least the, the, the first test version. Okay, number one. The charity along is for all charities. I've learned that charities are sometimes very personal and spark deep emotions, and we want to support that. So that's what we're doing for this guy, this time, but we may focus on another charity somewhere down the line during the year. And you can participate or not, it doesn't matter. Um, number two, dates are from October 1st to November 30th. And number three, let's spotlight specific charities each week if we can learn more about them. Some people have already shared some of here, some with us here on Ravelry. If you haven't and would like to, add your input. Then I'll turn around and share it on my YouTube channel. That's how I did last week with the uh, Operation Gratitude. And let me do a shout out for Sister Margaret Mary's music program that I've told you about in previous years. She sells yarn crafts at a school fair and uses the funds for all sorts of music education, technology, and supplies. She's got a gift for educating those with special needs of all kinds, and yet she herself is visually challenged, but you'd never know it as it doesn't slow her down one little bit. She's even developed an adaptive crochet technique that she's demonstrated on her channel. I'll link to that below. She'll need these supplies by November 15th if anyone's interested in donating some objects. All right, instructions. Here's the main thing. You record your items using this special form here. So let's click on that and see what it looks like. It's this form. It explains, you know, let's race the clock to see how many knit and crochet gifts we can produce and deliver and ship. Okay, so you'll put your, your name. How do we know you best? And this might be your Ravelry name or it might be Instagram if you don't want to participate on the Ravelry group or however we know you best. And for what charity is this entry? And all of this is explained beneath each thing. You'll put headwear items, neckwear items, afghans and blankets, and then this could be other. So maybe you have um, some stuffies, some toys or something that you've done. You might want to put those there. And then you click Submit. And this will automatically dump it in a spreadsheet for us so we can keep up with what's going on, which will be fun in the end. Now, um, this is important. I, I edited this later as we started thinking about it. As we develop this idea, issues pop up. Record your items as you donate them. Let's record the items that have actually left our homes. I mean, seriously, what good is all this if it's just going to sit on my dining room table? I mean, it's not good until it's actually in the hands of the people who need it, right? And then down here, um, I've got, of course, I'm aware that this is based on the honor system, but I'm trusting that people who care about others will care about themselves enough to be dishonest. <laughs> We're not competing here. We're working together for a common goal. And then, of course, you can come down here and put your input in, post pictures of what you've done, um, that sort of thing. That's that. So look for the link in the description box below and um, contribute. That'll be fun. Between now and I think the end of November, because these charities are usually getting their stuff out in December, you know, for Christmas boxes or who knows what they're doing. But, but our little test is running for that period of time. So I just thought it would be fun. And speaking of gifts, boy, I'm doing a good job with these transitions, aren't I? I got a surprise box from Juanita the other day. Juanita is known as She Spins on just about everything. Um, she's on YouTube. She has a great YouTube channel because she's one of those talented people who can do just about anything. She knits, she crochets, she spins, she gardens, she's an artist, she, um, you know, lots. So um, anyhow, I, I filmed a video of myself <laughs> opening the presents. I'm so goofy. I don't know if I'm going to give you the, the audio that goes with it. But I had the best time opening them up. She sent hats for ch my charity donations. She sent three of these black light yarn with uh, what appears to be crochet stitches with 
knitted brims down on the bottom, which is very clever, and they're slouchy. And this is exactly the type. This is, they love the bright colors, and I'm not good with slouchy hats because I, I haven't found a pattern that I really like yet. Actually, I did find the pattern, but I never did finish, try it out, rather, so I need to do that. But, um, but anyhow, she sent three of these black lights, and, and that's another thing. You should see her crochet, and I have seen her crochet because we've done um, Google Hangouts before. I mean, shh, this thing flies, and yet if you can see her work, it is absolutely exquisite. I mean, there are no mistakes. There's just, it's just, it's perfect. And, I, and if you could see her fly through that, you would wonder how it got to be that way. Um, and then she sent one of these pretty blues and a flower. So I am going to find myself some uh, my scrap yarn and make another hat and put this flower on the end of it. And that will be a big help. You know, I like to dress them up, make them different. And then she sent, now her, her name is She Spins, right? That's her username. Well, guess what? She spun me some stuff. And it did, the colors did not show up well at all last night. So I took some pictures that I can insert, but this yellow is, is a pale yellow. Uh, I'm using my GoPro. I have no idea what you're seeing right now. So I hope that the color is accurate, but um, it's basically the same pale yellow that my walls are, <laughs> which I, I love obviously since I painted the whole downstairs that color. And then she did these blues. I, this is kind of, I don't know, oceany colors is what I think of. You have blue, you have a seafoam green, you have a, you have some purples and uh, all, all different shades of those things I just mentioned. So that's beautiful. And, and it's, it's fingering white, it appears to be on that. And then this one's fun. Look at those colors. You have some bright, happy greens, bright yellows, and then you have the pastels, and I call this one pastelli. And it's that, it's kind of, uh, golly, I wish I knew my words. I don't know my proper terminology. It's, uh, it's like a twist. It's like a two-ply twist, but yet it's fat. I, I don't know the proper terminology for it, but it's a, it's a bulky yarn or maybe just a fat worsted I, I don't know i have to get a hook out and i can determine a little bit better but love those bright colors so that was fun so juanita thank you and if anybody is in the market for some hand spun i'm going to put the link down in uh to her etsy shop and um or you can just contact her through any of the ways that you know through uh Instagram or whatever because she can s certainly reach it that way as well So thank you Juanita <laughs> Did you see my creepy vulture experience that I posted on Instagram? I saw this guy on my roof and went out took a took a look and he had all kinds of friends that were up on my roof turns out they were the second string cleanup crew apparently there was something dead down by the lake uh, because Bentley found it not once, but twice, and had to have two baths. And uh, so anyhow, they were, the first string was hanging out down by the lake, taking care of matters in their own hands. I mean, look how many. Can you see this guy flying in for a landing? And so, you know, there was a whole other set that was waiting to uh, finish up, I guess. Or maybe they were the ones that went first. Who knows? But this guy is grandstanding. He was just standing in this position, acting all tough and everything don't forget to check out the links in the description box since i had so many this time but that's all for this week talk to you soon bye